Okay, so in this uh, tutorial, this is part two in developing a basic RPG, uh, we're just going to make the, uh, the program create a character. Now inside of, um, inside of basic simple RPG, let's open that up, um, I create an instance of our game logic class. Okay, and so I'm just going to instance that. And I say uh, static because this is uh, this is our main class static game logic GL equals new game logic. So now we've got an instance of the game logic class called GL. All right, and uh, we'll be doing some threading and stuff like that later. Don't worry about that right now. But we'll be passing that little GL object around so that we can work with it. Excuse me, GL instance. Um, and so uh, inside a game loop, I just call gl.waitforcommand, and it's just going to constantly wait for command. Right? Okay, so let's look at what I've done with wait for command. Um, let's go to um, game logic. And wait for command does an initial check. It says if game objects.pc.inroom equals zero. Well, what's going on there? I've added something to uh, game objects, and I've added something to PC. Inside of game objects, I've created a static instance of the PC class that I'm calling PC. And I said I want to make a new PC out of this. All right. And this is going to be your player. Everything that exists inside of this static object are going to be the values that your player contains, the items that it's holding, all that stuff is going to be loaded in here eventually. Um, and inside of PC, I did add an extra integer, and it's in room. Now, the rule I'm sort of applying here is if the player in room zero won't exist in our game. Our game will have room numbers one, two, three, four, five. But room zero is kind of going to be that default room where if something exists in zero or you exist in zero, technically you don't exist in the game. So uh, this would be the way to check for a start, I guess. And so if the um, PC inside of game logic is set to room zero, we can assume the game just started because the PC is in room zero at the very beginning of the game. Okay? And if it does, it calls the create character method. So I'm going to scroll down here to create character, and it simply prints system.out.println, welcome to the game, what is your name? We create a new scanner, um, which is something I should probably do at the top of this class instead of recreating it all the time. Um, I call uh, game ob I set game objects.pc.name, which is a string, to whatever it is they type in. Um, and I could make this next line as well, I guess, but we'll try to keep uh, usernames to a single word for right now. Uh, and it says, for the sake of simplicity, the gods are going to give you 100 hit points and 75 accuracy to start. Once again, we'll dig in, and you can modify that later. Uh, I set gameobjects.pc.hp to 100. PC.accuracy is set to 75, and I'm going to set PC.inroom to 1. Okay. And so we've got a PC now that exists in room one, and this, these values here will all be set for our PC. All right, now I did not talk about the room class. I meant to do that in the last video. So let's look at the room class, because we'll be working with that soon enough. Now that we've placed our PC in a room, um, we're going to need to know what's, what, what's happening. So um, every room has an integer called number. Every room will have a string called name, and that'll be the name that the user sees. Uh, it, it's like the title of the room. Every room will have a what's called an array list. Now, if you're not comfortable with array lists, you might want to look them up and just take a look at them. As we work with them, um, it, array lists are pretty easy to work with. It's just a list of, it, they work like arrays, except they're a little bit more flexible. It's not exactly an array. Um, and I've got a list, a string list called description here that will contain a series of indexes, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And position 0 will be the first line of the description. Position 1 will be the second line of the description. Position 2 will be the third line of the description. So um, every room will have an array list of uh, where every line is in a new index. And we'll loop through that to print the description of the room. So the room may have a title like a large castle and the description might be at line zero, you stand in a large castle. Line one, there are stones and rubble and bricks everywhere. Line three might be something like, uh, it is apparent that a large battle was fought here a long time ago. And so you'll have a, a room name with a description that has multiple lines. Now we're also going to have exits that's going to be a string as well. 
okay? And eventually we'll be looping through exits to figure out what rooms link to what other rooms. So if you're standing in room one, you might want to go south, and if you go south, it'll take you to room two. So every line in the exit array will contain two things eventually. It'll contain the word south, and it'll contain a number, which is the room that it takes you to if you go south. All right, and we'll be looping through those things eventually. Um, and every time we create a room, our constructor method does take a single argument, int x, and we're going to set the room number to x. Now, we haven't created any rooms yet. Okay, we've set a PC so that it says that we are, our PC is in room 1, but we haven't actually created room 1 anywhere yet, but we'll be doing that soon. In fact, we'll do it in the next video. So, if you've got your create character set up, and if I run this program, it just does a simple thing. Um, that's the wrong program. Let's go ahead and do a run as Java application. Uh, it should just say, welcome to the game. What is your name? I'll type Josh. For the sake of simplicity, uh, we're going to give you 100 HP and 75 accuracy. And now we have a game loop that is prompting and processing and not doing anything. So I could type, look, it doesn't do anything. I type a bunch of garbage, it doesn't do anything. Okay, it just loops and continues to prompt and do nothing. All right, so uh, good luck with that. And in video uh, three, we'll move on and we'll start to... Uh, probably get the player into a room. We'll see.